Hi guys, this is Yosef Demi, and I'm here to help you with the Chapter 15 Biology Test for, with Dr. Devine. Maybe Mr. Mac, I don't know. So anyway, let's start off with Chapter 15, Part 1. It says here, the biological species concept defines a species as a population or group of populations whose members have the ability to breed with one another in nature and produce for the offspring. Members of one species cannot successfully interbreed with members of other species. This concept helps biologists understand speciation, the origin of new species. Major evolutionary changes such as speciation are referred to as macroevolution. Macroevolution also includes extinction of species and evolution of new features such as wings. The inability of different species to interbreed is called reproductive isolation. Barriers to interbreeding include different mating seasons and behaviors used to attract mates. The origin of these differences is the key to speciation. One event that can lead to such speciation is geographic isolation. Geographic isolation occurs when a population becomes separated from the rest of the species due to geographic change or movement to an isolated place. The isolated population involves new adaptations to its changed environment. Speciation occurs if the adaptations lead to reproductive isolation. When populations of a species evolve adaptations to a variety of different environments and form diverse new species, the process is called adaptive radiation. Darwin thought macroevolution was a gradual process. Today, many biologists think that long periods of little change are broken down by shorter times of more rapid change. This model is called punctuated equilibrium. Okay, now on to chapter 15, part 2. Evolution is usually a remodeling process. Some complex structures, such as eyes of mammals, evolve in a series of small steps from simpler structures with the same basic function. Other structures evolve adaptations for certain functions and lay fulfilled for different functions. For example, in penguin, wings evolved into, into flippers used for flying underwater. Scientists are searching for the genetic basis of such evolutionary changes in embryology. Embryology? That's the study of how multicellular organisms develop from fertilized eggs in adults. The changes may be due to mutations in the genes that control the early development of an organism. Now on to part 3 of chapter 15. Bones and other hard parts of organisms may be preserved as fossils. Some fossils consist of footprints or other marks left in sediments. Rarely, an entire organism is preserved as a fossil. For example, mammoths have been preserved in ice. Younger sediments are usually layered over older ones, you know what I mean? Therefore, a fossil's position in rock layers reveals whether it is older or younger than other fossils. This information is the fossil's relative age. Absolute age, age or age in years can be determined with radiometric dating. This method is based on the amount of radioactive isotopes a fossil contains. To calculate absolute age, scientists use an isotope's half-life, the time it takes for 50% of an original sample to decay. The geologic timescale organizes Earth's history in the Precambrian era. Precambrian era. Earth's history into the Precambrian, Precambrian, Mesozoic, I mean Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic eras. The boundaries between these eras are marked in the fossil record by major changes in life forms. Many of these changes can be explained by continental drift, the movement of Earth's continents on large plates of crust. Near the end of the Paleozoic Gala, all the land masses moved together in a supercontinent called Pangaea. This led to a major of environmental changes and competition between species that have been isolated. The result appears to have been an episode of great species loss called mass extinction. Mass extinction. God, it's a little closer to my face. Mass extinctions also occurred at the end of the other eras. Each mass extinction gave surviving organisms new opportunities and led to adaptive radiation. That's from 15.1.
During the Mesozoic era, the continents drifted apart. After that, species living on different continents evolved independently. Hi! <clears throat> now on to the final part, 15.4. Modern taxonomy reflects evolutionary history. What is taxonomy? I'll tell you. Taxonomy is a branch of biology that involves the identification, naming, and classification of species. One goal of taxonomy is to assign a universal scientific name to each known species. Another goal is to organize the diversity of life by classifying species into larger groups of related species. The most widely used system of classification was developed by Carlos Linnaeus. This system has a binomial or two-part name for each species. It also orders species into a hierarchical of broader groups. In classifying organisms, biologists try to reflect the evolutionary relationships among species. A diagram that shows hypothesized evolutionary relationship is called a phylogenic tree. One clue about evolutionary relationships is homologous structures such as bats' wings and whales' flippers. However, not all similar structures are homologous. Convergent evolution, the process which unrelated species from similar environments, similar environments, environments have adaptations that seem very similar themselves. These similar adaptations, such as wings of insect and birds, are called analogous structures. Other clues about evolutionary relationships come from comparing genes and proteins of different species. One way of thinking about classification is cladistics. What is cladistics? Cladistics is based on derived characters, homologous characteristics that unite in a group of organisms. To show these relationships, taxonomists use cladograms, which are phylogenetic trees constructed from a series of two-way branch points. I'll try to find one for you guys. No, that's... So anyway, phylogenetic trees, I mean cladograms. Cladistic analysis led to revision of the traditional classification scheme, which has just two kingdoms, plants and animals. The revised scheme adds three new kingdoms, mon monarins, protists, and fungi, to the two original. An even newer scheme added a taxon category above the kingdom level called the domain. The scheme divides organisms into three domains, bacteria, archaea, and, um, Eukarya. And that's all in the chapter 15 study guide. I hope you all do good on the test. This is Yosef Demby, signing out.